What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Modal Man Dan here. Uh, today, I want to create a video for new players and even veteran players who played Unchained and 1 and 2 and stuff. We're going to talk about a few things um, within the game that may be different than what you've known from previous games, or if you're new, that may not be super clear. But before we start uh, with game content, I do want to touch on the troubleshooting aspect, the Stadia aspect, and the Steam aspect. Um, <clears throat> so as far as troubleshooting, when you when you play on Stadia, you have to have a minimum, or it's required a minimum, uh, of 10 megabit upload per second. Um, <clears throat> I know that's not feasible for everybody, and Stadia, of course, is not also in um, everybody's country, uh, so there is that. Um, I know my old internet, I would not be able to play this, so I had to upgrade from a $17 a month to a $50 a month. It's supposed to be $75, but I talked them down to $50. Um, and, and yeah, it sucks. I know. Um, <clears throat> that being said, if it was to go on Steam, of course, it would be a locally downloadable game, so you could have a shitty internet and still be totally fine. Because uh, you, you, know, you download it over the course of a day or two days or however long it takes, and then you play it offline. And you, you know, enjoy the game. Of course, you're going to have to have a, a PC that can run everything and handle everything. But, you know, if Internet's the problem, then, or if your location's a the problem, then, you know, you can connect to a VPN. Of course, that's going to have a little bit of, uh, of overhead charge for your um, Internet speed. But you still be able to get the game, download it, and then play it. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> people have asked if it's coming out to Steam. And that's probably, like, the number one asked question. <laughs> Uh, or one of them anyways I don't I don't represent robot or anything um, but it is my belief that it will come out on Steam when Orcs Must Die Unchained happened there were a couple of questionable decisions made on its on its early on game life and um, they really tried to go in an, in an odd direction for a tower defense game um, that really hurt their sales and it hurt their, it hurt, kind of hurt the Orcs Must Die image. Uh, one in, the people who played one and two were used to an offline solo play. Um, when they introduced multiplayer, they were trying to, you know, introduce a new audience. Um, and the new audience sort of received it well, but there was so much, uh, so much other out there that was solely multiplayer. And those people who wanted to play the multiplayer competitively um, just had other games that focused on multiplayer competitive game play. Uh, I will say that there's really not many games like Orcs Must Die. Uh, I think uh, Dungeon Defenders, was it? I think, or Plants vs. Zombies, those are some, some I, uh, I think those are s similar to Orcs Must Die 3 and the Orcs Must Die series, but other than that, there's really nothing that comes to mind. Um, <clears throat> so will it come out on Steam? Maybe. It probably will. Uh, Google had to buy the rights to Orcs Must Die 3 and make it an ex Stadia exclusive. So really the only way for Orcs Must Die 3 to live or to exist is that Google bought them and you know paid money to put it onto to Stadia as an exclusive. So we'll see. It is one of the better games on Stadia as of, as of right now from what I've heard. But, you know, it should be coming out on Steam eventually, I would assume, but I don't know. All right, so that's... That's that. Um, for troubleshooting, well, I guess for troubleshooting, you know, restart your router. Uh, there, you can try using the the new Edge, the Microsoft Edge, that come that came out with a recent update for Windows. Um, some people said it's that it's better playing on that. I have found that my quality of my graphical quality increased whenever I went to Stadia Plus, which is a Google Chrome extension, uh, and then it installs stadia looking like an actual client for you know like steam or epic games or something like that it installs on your desktop <clears throat> so you don't have to open google to play it but if you um if you are playing on google or um edge and you're having you know difficulties um uh, run can run windows updates of course you can, can never hurt um and restart your router check your router for firmware updates do a speed test call your um call your ISP and if you're not getting the speech you're supposed to be getting and then you know Tell them to get to work and and give you what you're supposed to have because you're paying for it. It's a utility um, Second thing That's kind of a long first thing second thing is discord in the video description There's going to be a link to the discord. That is where robot hangs out uh, They have a man named juiced who's the community manager 
and he answers all of our questions and lists all of our complaints. Uh, you can submit stuff on the bug. And if you want to look for group, the group, uh, looking for group mechanism inside Orcsmas Die 3 is not very good. Uh, it's very tedious to get through everything, you know, per map, per uh, difficulty sort of thing. Um, there's a looking for group section in there, so you can just pop on there and say, hey, you need help with uh, a certain map, certain levels, certain difficulty, whatever the case may be. And people are more than willing to help. Um, Second thing, or, or I guess the third thing then in this list is the wiki. Uh, also, the link is in the description below. That's got information that's not fully uh, developed yet. I am kind of primarily, and I think I'm the only one who's touched it, but uh, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. There's a couple of things to add on to it, but it's getting there. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's get into the gameplay of this. And we are going to, we're going to start on sludge shelves. And I want to show you guys something here. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is spatial awareness and pathing. So, on sled shelves, you have three entrances. You have one entrance up here at the top. And we'll get into kill boxes a little bit later, and we can actually use this map as a, as a good example for kill box. We get this door at the top, and they run over here, and they run down the stairs, up the stairs, and into the rift. It's a very short path from that door to that rift. And then you've got these two doors. You've got this door here, which in this map is fire type minions and then you have this door down here which is you know orcs and trolls and stuff so they both come together at the bottom of these stairs and then they run up these stairs and they run through this little thing and they run up these stairs and over here and here at this little spot at the bottom of these stairs it's where everything comes together from that door and those other two doors to run into the rift. Now, you might be thinking, well, if this is where everything converges, then I can probably build around the rift up here. And that's true, you can, but it's not very useful. So you want to make part-time. This is, of course, on Endless, so there's no part-time, but you do want to make part-time if you're playing this in story mode, and we'll get to part-time a little bit later. You know, but let's say, okay, um, I start up here and I make myself a little kill box. Right, and I put traps around, stuff like that. <clears throat> Just more money than I remember having to start with. Um, but let's say you make this, right? And you get through this door, and now you need to sell everything, and you need to move to the other doors. Well, something you might be tempted to do is build out here. If you build here, and this is, again, spatial awareness, this does not work. This does not work because a large or a very heavy enemy which we'll get into size categories later, but a very heavy enemy is a red, a giant red circle on your mini-map, which is top, top right corner of the screen, you cannot get through here. And you know that because you, you can't place a 2x2 two two trap in this section. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid squares on so you can see what it looks like. This square needs to be... Oh, Oh, those used to stick around, but then they disappear. Anyways, you see that one square. That needs to be too wide for anything that's a very heavy enemy to walk through. If you build it out here, you've still only got the one square for them to walk through. It's a corner-to-corner -corner piece. So you really, the only way, if you're going to uh, weave them in, is to start here and count two out, and then you can build it here. So now you can build any of your floor traps you can link them up and you can put a flat side by a flat no, side so you're not cornering up as long as you can do that they can walk through and they won't attack your barricades you can leave them here and the only thing that will attack the barricades are the very heavy enemies orcs and cobalts and stuff they will actually run through this part they won't attack the barricades they won't bother with it um so you can use that and try and use that to your advantage um but you know, it's probably best to not have to worry about your barricades being attacked because there's on this map, especially there's plenty of explosive units that will explode them anyways. Um, so the best, the better weaving you can do, um, the better you'll, uh, you'll be off. Okay. So the second thing that we want to talk about are combos and kill streaks, <clears throat> which generate revenue. Um, a combo is like, it's like the snack, right? You've got cheese in the middle, you've got like a pretzel crust on the outside, and you've got salt on the outside of that. That's a combo three. Combo times three is what we call it here in the game. So if I have, for example, I'm going to pretend like I have two barricades here, but for money's sake, I'm not going to put them down. If I have this and this and...
and this, one and these. this, and this. And let's say I've got a ballista over there. If I'm an orc and I run and I hit tar, okay, and then I hit brimstone, and then I hit a shock, uh, a shock floor spike, and I'm still alive, and then I get hit, and then I get pulled up by this gravity trap, and then I get affected by the butterfly, and then I get frozen by this dart spitter, and then I die from the wall charger. I have just gotten a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven combo, except being lifted gives you an extra combo, or being airborne, which gives me eight. If you shoot him, it gives him nine. Um, and he's distracted, which I don't know if distracted counts or not, but you're looking at at least a nine times combo. The combos generate more gold or more coin or rift coin or whatever you want to call it. So alternating or, or spreading out your traps is a really good way to do that. Um, one thing that you might see people do is if they have floor traps, they might just alternate them in ceiling traps as well, depending on the kind of ceiling traps you have. They might alternate them in a, a checkerboard pattern or a zigzag pattern looking yeah. something like this. And the reason they do that is because orcs don't always stay on, on one lane if it's open like this. Sometimes they'll run in a corner and they'll be affected by maybe this tar and then they'll run into this spike. Or they'll run into this spike and then instead of this brimstone, they hit this brimstone. And so you want to cover your tracks on how, their damage, or how your damage is laid out. If you lay down your tar all together and then your spikes and brimstone all together, I mean, you'll still it'll still work. But um, the other thing you don't want to have happen is a minion running up here, triggering both spikes and then triggering both brimstone, taking up a charge for each of them because they're limited charges and putting both spikes on cooldown. And you get away with that by having it um, alternated instead of instead of putting in it by, by rows. Um, <clears throat> Kill streaks are if you kill a minion uh, or more than three minions in a uh, select amount of time, you'll, you'll get what's called a kill streak counter. It'll show up on the left side of your screen. And the higher the kill streak, the more money you get because they are a multiplier of 11. So you get 11 times whatever your kill streak is in coin whenever the kill streak ends. That also gives you a score. Uh, the higher combo, the higher the score. Combos really don't give you a ton of extra money, but it does give you extra money, so it's good, a good idea to build to get those. Um, so in combos, we can talk about the area of effect of traps. So you can see that there's this little blue box, this little blue line over here, and it's at my head, and it goes over here, and it goes up to here and over here. This is an area of effect for this trap. This trap will trigger or I guess it's an area of trigger. It'll trigger if anything at all walks inside of this little box. Which means you can put wall traps on the other sides of it and this will still be just as effective, if not even more effective. One of the things you can do is you can find a ceiling like this and you can just put ceiling traps all the way around it and then it will be in the center and it will hit everything that gets affected by all these other ceiling traps. It's a pretty good idea. Uh, a lot of a lot of times, if it has a wide area of triggering, people will put them over barricades. So if I if I'm going to weave whatever's coming out of this door, and I'm going to weave it around through here, you know, put you know uh, barricades like this, so that way they can weave in and out. Um, then you'll see people put the ceiling traps just above the barricades because they will affect everything outside of it, and they'll of course trigger by everything outside of it. Um, something else to note is the floor spikes and the tar have a trigger space of one and a half high one and a half high is uh, or, or one high i guess because it's just a wall charger so two of those grid squares high which means if you put uh, something to lift them in the air flip them in the air and they're up in the air whenever these go off they'll still get hit so you can kind of stack up enemies on top of the same square for maximum damage potential Lastly, talking about the area of effect and the area of triggering, we'll run over here to these ceilings. If you put this dart spitter up here in, in the ceiling, you see that the blue square box is left up there. And then if you put a gravity pillar, the gravity pillar actually has seemingly, from what I can tell, an unlimited range. So the gravity trap will pick up an enemy, bring it up to the top of the gravity trap, and when it when the duration ends of the lift, it'll drop them and they'll take fall damage unless they bounce off other orcs. 
but they can also bounce off into um, you know uh, the pool of, of liquid acid or lava or whatever the case may be. If they if they fly up to the top, they will fly into the dart spitter's area of triggering. And what this will do is this will then pop out and it'll shoot darts. Now the darts themselves can go much farther than the actual area of trigger, which is why I don't really want to call it an area of effect, because the darts can fly out and they'll hit things that are down here and they'll freeze them where they're at. So those are some things to keep in mind. Also, if you uh, put it like up here, for example, you'll see that the blue box is uh, above my head, so regular orcs won't trigger them. However, very heavy enemies like trolls and ogres they will trigger them because they're tall enough to um, walk into the, you know, the headspace will walk into this little area of trigger. So that's all talking about, um, you know, spatial awareness pathing, of course, with barricades, do watch out for the corners, make sure that um, if you are going to place them, that you either know that they're going to be attacked, or um, if you are not sure, make sure that you can place uh, floor traps that the sides all connect completely and that way you know that they have plenty of room to get through if they don't they'll attack your barricades okay uh, then we talked about combos and kill streaks again that's really a primary way to get money uh, if you're struggling try and focus on getting more combos uh, early on so that way you get more money for later waves um, now let's talk about part time and I was showing you something on an endless map so let's go over to the story mode uh, to get five skulls, you have to meet a couple of different requirements. Uh, the first thing is you have to, or at least for story mode, you have to A, beat it within a certain amount of time, and B, don't lose any rift points. Uh, I think it's like every five rift points you lose, you lose a skull, and the maximum amount of skulls, even if you make part-time. So, uh, you'll notice at the top right corner of my screen I have a part-time listed there. All you'll have to do to get the part time so you can see what it is for the map that you're on is to go into options. You hit escape and go into options. You come down here underneath the show trap grid, which you, I, you saw earlier. You go to show part time, click yes, click accept, and then you'll see the part time you're supposed to make. And that will start counting down whenever you start the map. Uh, this is very, very useful for new players. If you do not know how fast you need to kill things and where you're at in the part time, it just makes it easier to not have to lose the game or to get a four skull instead of a five skull and then look at the stats on um, after the game to check to see how fast it took you and stuff. And then you can really find out where the orcs are getting through and, and maybe build around that. Um, on top of part time, we'll talk about go breaks. A go break is where we're at right now. If I, if I can press G to release the horde, to unleash the horde, uh, then that's, that's a go break. Uh, you have these on story mode. You have these on endless. Uh, if you're playing Rift Lord on story mode, you do not have go breaks. Um, if you're playing War Mage or Apprentice, you do have go breaks after some waves. Not all waves, but most of them. You'll have a go break. Um, leaving a go break up will reduce your part time. So it'll, it'll tick down your part time because you're still playing. And basically, if you're having a trouble uh, making a part time, just as soon as you can press G... And you have all your traps set up, just press G and let it run. You know, you can place more traps after the, the next round starts because the minions have to come from the very front of the uh, front of the map. <clears throat> Other than that, go breaks do end on endless. They happen every once in a while, depending on, on the map. They'll happen at different times. But around the wave, I think it's 16 or 17, for all maps, they will stop happening. You will no longer get go breaks. Go breaks will regenerate your barricades. Go breaks will regenerate your archers. If they die, uh, it will replace them with new archers. Um, so if you don't have any go breaks and your archers die, you have to go and sell the archer during the three seconds between each wave. And then you'll have to replace the archer. Meaning that archers are a bit harder to use. They're, they're especially hard to use on Endless, but uh, quite a bit harder to use on uh, Rift Lord than they are uh, on War Mage because on War Mage they'll just come back of themselves and you don't have to worry about selling or rebuying them. <clears throat> All right, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about uh, is the tips section. You can find a lot of cool information looking at the tips. And you find the tips at the bottom of the screen before starting a game. This one says, look at the mini map, it has useful information. You click an arrow or something on the right, I thought. 
Okay, you should just press your arrow on your keyboard, I guess. I just one, there's an arrow to click. And you can go through and you can look at the different kinds of tips. And you can read them all. They're all listed, or if not all of them, probably most of them are listed there on the wiki. There, and it's on tip section. But um, if you want to read through them here, they've got good information on there. Um, so we talked about tips. We talked about go breaks. We talked about part time. Uh, you know, um, like I said, if you're having trouble with your part time, make sure you're not spending a lot of time on your go breaks. And you're just pressing G to get through them. Um, We'll talk about your elements. So you have several different elements. You have fire, which you can see in this brimstone. Um, you have arcane, which you can see it's purple. It's represented by purple. The uh, wand says it does arcane damage as well. Um, you have physical damage, which is done by, well, for the gravity pillar, for example, uh, if you get the damage upgrade, it will do physical damage. Uh, you have lightning damage, such as the wall charger. There are, um, of course, the... Uh, walls, or the lightning staff, uh, they do lightning damage. Of course, you have ice, which is um, you get the ice dart spitter, you have the ice floor saw, uh, you have the ice amulet, those sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> these all have minions or types of minions that they do bonus damage against. They all have a sort of specialty, if you will. Um, for example, ogre mages take reduced damage from arcane traps. If you have a fire, minion at all any kind of fire minion firelings fire elementals um, light fire minions heavy whatever the case may be fire lords fire overlords whatever it is um they don't take any damage from fire they do take damage from everything else but not fire they take bonus damage from ice uh if they kind of mimic what's already in the game with orcs like a light orc has its own version of a fire uh, fire what are they called i don't know a light fire guy um in which case they take bonus damage from ice and no damage from fire, whereas a light orc would take bonus damage from all of them, but not have any resistances, so they won't take any, I guess, extra damage. Um, I haven't really tested that one yet. But just so you know, there are some things that have resistances. Nothing resists slow. I know that uh, earth elementals and unchained used to reduce tar slow. The only way to slow them was from using the uh, spider web wall, but that doesn't exist in this game. Everything is affected by tar. <clears throat> Um, also talking about uh, crowd control, you have ice, which freezes, you have stun, you have charm, uh, charm, again, you can use butter or butterflies, technically distraction, um, charm is the right mouse button for the wand, uh, it'll cause your, whoever you charm to go and attack other uh, enemies until it dies upon explosion, it launches enemies away from it uh, and does damage. Um, but yeah, you do have your uh, your distraction with butterflies, your distraction with the confusion flower or confusion. I kind of use all three. Just I toss all three into the same category: charm, confusion, and distraction. Um, you've got fear with your jar of ghosts. It, they just walk away from the point of origin from the fear uh, whenever you break it on the ground, kind of like Ozeal's thing. Um, <clears throat> again, yeah, you've got ice where you can freeze. You've got knockback. Um, you can push people around with the wind belt with the flip trap with the spike wall uh, with the push trap with the haymaker that sort of stuff um, if you're familiar with the haymaker in the older games the haymaker did used to affect uh, very heavy enemies they don't anymore um, they they damage them but they don't do any crowd control whatsoever to have very heavy enemies which means they've really lost a lot of their uh, specialty um, the swinging mace also knocks them back but not very far um, it also knocks them forward. So if you place it, just know that whatever direction it's swinging, it will push and encourage the minions to go in that direction. It does uh, pretty decent damage though. Um, the shock zapper, of course, you know, you have stun, you have stun on the wall charger, stun on shock zapper, stun on spike wall. It also pushes them back. Um, you got lift up by gravity pillar, anything airborne, uh, kind of touching on combos again, anything airborne, the the, the combo lasts for two seconds um, after it being affected. So it's affected by tar. Two seconds later, it will remove the additional point that tar gives to the combo. Um, so if it runs on tar and then runs off tar for three seconds and then gets killed by a brim spike, it's not going to have any combos because it's just going to be brim one, spike one, and that's it. Um, no tar added, but if tar is you know, within the two seconds, they have that tar effect have happened to them, um, then they'll, you'll get a times three combo. But if they're airborne, it, it pauses. 
the combo um, countdown will will cease, uh, and then it'll pick up whenever they land again. So you can kind of cycle people through with flip traps and whatnot um, into more and more combos, and just kind of additively increase the combo counter. Um, as far as CC is concerned, though. The other kind of CC they have is the minions will get stuck on each other. So if they are trying to run through the gate, especially late game endless, they'll just get stuck on each other. So make a choke point and they will eventually, if they can't move anywhere, they'll despawn. And if they can move, then they'll probably stutter step because they are trying to get around or, or in front of the person in front of them. But they can't because everybody's so fast that everybody becomes so slow. And lastly, we're going to talk about size categories of enemies. And for this, we're going to pull up the wiki. Let's do that. Whenever my browser decides to open. Okay. Here you have your five categorizations of enemies. Now, if you click on B, which I have here in the screen behind me, if you click on the letter B before you start a match where you can select your loadout, um, you can hover over the enemy uh, icons, the enemy icons like this, and it'll tell you about, you know, light enemy, weak against arcane elements. For whatever reason, the medium orcs and the medium um, fire guys, the fire fiends, they both have light enemy listed there, but I've found with the flip trap that there are five actual sizes of enemies and medium orcs and medium fire fiends fit in the medium. Some of these on the light side might actually fit the medium like the wraith healer. I'm not exactly sure. It was a little hard to test those, but their, their splash heart and, and, and the information from the game says that they're light. So I left them light. Um, with these, they are listed based upon how far they flip with flip traps. And the only other thing that would do it is giant flip traps um, and uh, spike wall. Those are really the only three that are going to affect any of these guys. But they are listed as such. The very heavy enemies will show up on your minimap as a big red circle, as I said earlier. Um, you do want to have make sure that they have a 2x2 two two grid square area to walk through uh, with your barricades. If you don't, then they're going to destroy barricades. Um, and immovable or bosses, for some reason, there are certain crowd control things that can affect them, and not all of it's the same. However, they none of them can be flipped from a flip trap. None of them can be pushed by a wall trap. So that's a thing. But Mister Moneybags, for example, he can be charmed by the wand's right mouse button. Well, uh, Craig cannot, or Gorbash cannot. Um, I show you. I think the first four. Those four, you see, you only see the bosses in uh, the war scenarios and endless. Endless, you see Mr. Moneybags. War scenarios, you see the other four. Um, there is no boss for the final or the very first. Um, no, yeah, the very first one you see Craig, uh, but after that, the very final one does not have a boss. So, you know, not to worry about there. Um, everything else will be affected by flip traps and spike wall. Uh, that concludes this video. I know it's maybe a little bit longer than I was expecting, to be honest, but I've really got nothing else. I think that's uh, enough for everybody there um, to, to really take this and run with it. Um, like I said, you know, make sure some things I've seen people do is they, they'll throw down like 15 spike traps, you know, in a row and expect that to be effective. Well, it might be, but you're missing out on combos, so you're missing out on, on extra coin, generated coin. Um, you know, Tar is a really good thing. Um, and, and you know, stick with me for the next uh, series that I'm going to have on this channel, which is going to be uh, starting from a brand new account and running through to beat Rift Lord on all of the maps. Um, just kind of this, what you want to spec into from you know, start to finish, what's useful, what's good, um, that sort of thing. So anyways, <clears throat> I don't know what that was. Um, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Please, if you want to, leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow. Uh, I do stream on, currently I'm streaming on both Twitch and YouTube. Um, so I hope, you, I hope to see you guys there. You know, I stream Endless. I like to play Endless. I love Endless. 
Story mode, eh, nah, maybe not as much, but endless is fun. So I will, uh, I will catch you guys on the flip side.